Washington lawmakers make plenty of decisions that impact farmers and ranchers. So when journalist Sarah Wyant decided to start her own publication, it just made sense to cover that beat. It was just me and a part-time person when we started 16 years ago, but now we've grown to having the largest ag-focused publication group in Washington, D.C. Her team works hard to stay on top of every story. Now, I started in magazines and we were writing like three to four weeks ahead of time for an issue that would come out after being printed and mailed. And now it's a click of a button. It's a story on an iPhone. It's a tweet. It's all these social media tactics that are being employed from others telling those stories that you are just watching all sorts of different sources to try to make sure that you are on top to the best of your ability. And it, it really has taken a, a great team of, of folks to do that. Sarah's time writing stories about farm policy give her a different perspective on farming and it helped her make a decision for the future of the farm. There's a generation of us who are hitting our 60s and are seeing our parents fade away and their legacy. Do we want to preserve that by keeping farming or what? And so we have these tough decisions. Do we sell? Do we rent? In Sarah's case, she inherited part of the land and bought another part of it. Now she owns just over 300 acres and rents to two tenants. She doesn't visit often, but she was able to make it to Iowa to show me around. So Sarah, we're out here where you have this grass waterway. Um, you know, you're in a part of the, the country where, well, not really part of the country. A lot of people think I was flat, but it is not <laughs> flat, right? There's no. some gently rolling hills right here. Uh, talk to me a little bit about this grass waterway that you have here and what this does to help with conservation. So some people have the misconception that farmers plant fence row to fence row, having heard that back in the 80s. It's really not the truth anymore, especially when you have highly erodible lands like we're on right now. You need to protect uh, some of the ways that the water is going to be running off from fields. And this was an existing grass waterway that was already here when I bought the farm. And I've been talking to the Natural Resources Conservation Service about what else can we do to make sure we minimize runoff and to protect the soil resources. And so we developed a conservation plan and part of that is putting in more grass waterways like these. In addition, some tiling, um, some other buffer strips and looking at ways that, again, we can just do as much as possible to protect the environment while having a very productive crop. Yeah. Learn more about Sarah's conservation efforts and the business of renting farmland.